Hello everyone. On August 12th, I gave a talk at SCS San Jose about duplicate content and multiple site issues. Uh, in order to get that information as to as broad of an audience as possible, we're repeating some of that on our Google Webmaster channel. So first of all, um, my name is Greg Grothaus. I'm a software engineer at Google who works on search quality. I've been here for about four years. And uh, what we do in search quality is finding the right information and ranking it right. I'm a passionate Googler. And what we're doing right here is part of my job of webmaster outreach, so where we reach out to the community and explain a lot of things about how Google search quality works. So we're going to be talking about duplicate content today. Uh, first and foremost, I want to clear up a myth that kind of goes around uh, about duplicate content called the duplicate content penalty. Um, generally speaking, people are worried that Google has this uh, penalty for sites that have duplicate content on them. Uh, I think, personally, I think that the reason this happens is people will see this message. They're doing a query. They see, in order to show you the most relevant results, we've omitted some entries very similar to the ones already displayed. If you like, you can repeat the search with the omitted results included. And they click the repeat the search link, and they see, oh no, my website has been omitted from Google search results. And I've seen evidence that people kind of get worried about this and thinking that this is, this is actually a penalty that Google is applying on their site. What's actually happening is that uh, we're looking at the query that a user is doing, and we're saying, we want diversity in the results that we're going to show a user. So if someone searched for fluffy bunnies, we want to show uh, as maybe page one the Wikipedia article on fluffy bunnies, but we don't want to show as page two the print version of the same article with the exact same text. So what we're doing is, for that specific query, we're omitting the, the print article. This is not a penalty. In fact, if you adjusted your query to search for Fluffy Bunny's print version, you would probably get the reverse effect, where the print version would be showing instead of the initial Fluffy Bunny's Wikipedia article. Um, and so on this slide, I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, uh, some, some information from our Webmaster uh, guidelines on duplicate content, just a couple snippets. Um, you can find out more information about this by searching for duplicate content guidelines on Google. Um, but essentially what we say is, we recognize that most duplicate content is not deceptive in origin. And so as a result, we're not trying to penalize it. We're just trying to show in our search results uh, examples of pages that are distinct and have useful information that is different from the results we've already shown you above. Um, and this is, a very, this is very much a per query thing. There's some exceptions to this, and these are what we call spam uh, in our search quality. The exceptions, though, aren't really a penalty for duplicate duplicate content, it's a penalty for spam. So someone, for example, who comes along and creates a web page that's an exact copy of articles on Wikipedia or some other source without any extra valid content and, and marks it up so that they can drive traffic to their e-commerce or something like that, is really doing a disservice to our users and to Google. Uh, as a result, we like to take that content out and make, or, or reduce its ranking. Um, this is what we call intent to manipulate rankings and deceive our users. Just like spammers might use bold tags on the page, spammers might use duplicate content. Just because the bold tags are there doesn't mean we're removing or penalizing someone for using bold tags. In the same way, we're not penalizing someone for using duplicate content. We're penalizing them for spam, and duplicate content might be there as well. Um, you can find a lot more information about this in our Google Webmaster Guidelines. All right, so on this slide, I'm going to show you a little bit about what duplicate content is, now that we've gone past the, the question of this myth. Here I show eight different examples of URLs that are all identical. Uh, the URLs are the same, but the content is really, uh, the, the URLs are different, but the content is very much the same, and you can see that pretty clearly. Uh, does this really happen? Yes. Uh, right here I show uh, three different versions of the Royal uh, Gov the UK website, the British monarchy. Each version is the exact same content, but slightly different URLs. And so this is a pretty big website. Uh, lots of websites have this exact problem. So, why is this a problem? What, what, what is the deal here? Obviously, there's no penalty associated with this. Uh, we're not going to remove the royal monarchy website. Um, but what's going on here is you can have some side effects that are, that are much more second order. So one, one example is that your links, if you have links to different versions of the page, uh, you're not accumulating all that link juice in one place. So let's say you have two pages. They're the same content, different, but different URLs and you have 10 links to one and 10 links to the other, instead of having 20 links to one page, which would get that one page ranked really highly, both of those sites only now have 10 links to them, and they're both going to disappear in the rankings, or potentially, depending on the query. So that's one problem. The second problem is 
uh, Google will automatically try to figure out that these two pages are the same, and we'll collapse them together in our search results and show only one of the URLs. Um, for, when we do this, it's likely that uh, we're going to pick the best URL for the users, but sometimes we pick, get the wrong one. And you are the best person to know uh, which URL you would like your users to see as a webmaster. So if you can help us by making sure that we only have one result, you can make sure that user-friendly URLs are in our search results, and users will actually click on those more often than the not-friendly stuff. Uh, and last and not least is if there are more pages that we're having to crawl on your website that are essentially all just the same stuff, we're not going to get as deep into the new stuff on your website that you'd like us to see. And so it's always in everyone's best interest to have, a, have Google crawl as much of their content as they can. But if we're crawling the same thing over and over again, uh, you'll end up with a problem of not seeing everything you can. Um, so how do you fix these duplicate content issues? The first thing is to understand what we call the canonical. Um, and the canonical means a, the simplest version of the content that you can come up with uh, without any loss of generality. So the canonical is actually referring to the URL that you want to show for that content. So if you have content that's available on, one, on two different URLs, pick which one you like. That's what's called your canonical URL. Uh, now, once you've picked the one you want, there's lots of ways you can tell Google that information. Uh, the best way to do it is to structure your site, uh, site such that all of your links go to the, to the, the, the canonical version, um, and generally such that users end up on those canonical versions. So when they link to it, they link to the canonical versions as well. Uh, but in addition to that, you can do a couple other tricks called a 301 redirect, or this, a new option, which is new from SES last year, or since SES last year, which is the rel equals canonical tag. We'll talk about those in a second here. Uh, so for 301 redirects, these are an HTTP server uh, header that gets sent along with your uh, file when you're sending it to the user. What it does is it tells both the browser and Google, this is not the URL you want. The URL you want is somewhere else. And what happens to a user is they actually, their browser will redirect them to a new place. And Google will more or less treat it the same way. So if, you were, if, if your user arrives on uh, your website at the wrong URL, using a 301 will take them to the right place and it will also work quite well for Google. One of the really common places where this gets used is for moving a site, either to a new domain, new host, um, or if you just want to modify the, the structure of the URLs on your site. Um, and we've actually got a lot more information of that on the Webmaster uh, Help Center if you want to take a look at it, a little bit more information than I can talk about here today. So 301s are great, and, and we've had that as an option around for a very long time. Uh, but there are some cases we notice that really just don't quite fit what 301 should be used for. Our, um, a really good example is a Wikipedia page that has some content on it, and then there's a link on the left-hand side that's to the uh, print version of the same page. If you 301'd once the user got to the print version back to the original content, there's no way for the user to be able to, to you know, make use of that print version. So it's essentially a broken issue, or a broken system. Um, what happens, what we're offering here is uh, a new tag called rel equals canonical. And I'll explain that here um, in, in just a second. Here's, here's another uh, example, which is essentially, let's say you use your URLs as a UI device for your users. So let's say you come to stuff.com, and you want to buy some red tint bags. And you click on tents, you click on bags, and you buy red tint bags. Another person comes along, they click on bags, they click on tents, and then they buy red tent bags. You're showing in the URL different uh, these breadcrumbs, which indicate the user's path. It gives the user a feeling of where they've been, where they're going, and uh, helps them structure in their mind how your site works. So different content, or the same content, can be found by different different paths. This is okay, and but the problem is if you had to use 301s to fix that, you lose that value of the URL being a UI component. So these are some of the tough tough issues that Relicals Canonical hopes to solve. So what is Relicals Canonical? It's just an HTML tag. You put it on your pages, and you say, this page here, I want to splat its canonical over to this other page. So let's say a user arrives on, or, or Googlebot arrives on red tent bags, and you want um, red bags tent to be the canonical. Uh, so you just tell Googlebot with this little tags, tag on, that one, on the first page that the canonical is this other page, and Googlebot essentially treats it as a 301 redirect, whereas your users won't see anything. Um, 
This works really great for, 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 the, for any of the cases I raised before, but it also works really great if you don't have control of maybe the HTTP responses your server uh, sends back to users um, or any other reason that you might just not want to use a 301. So let's go through a couple of questions and answers on this. Um, so how does rel equals canonical work? Uh, and what are the rules for using rel equals canonical? Uh, the rule is that you can splat from one URL to another URL as long as it's on the exact same domain. Uh, this works across hosts, different hosts. So for example, zeta.zappos.com could splat over to www.zappos.com. But it doesn't work across domains. So zeta.zappos.com couldn't redirect over to google.com, for example, with uh, rel equals canonical. You can use it for uh, protocols, like HTTP versus HTTPS. And you can use it for ports as well. Uh, should you use 301s, or should you use rel equals canonical? It's totally up to you. This is really just another tool in your arsenal, another option you've got for you. And the last question that we get a lot is, do these pages have to be identical? One of the problems is if we come along to, to, as Google at two different pages, or the same page at two different times, we may see like a date on this page, like last updated on blah or whatever. And we might notice that they're slightly different. So we recognize that it, clearly these pages, we can't expect them to be always completely identical. But we do expect them to be very similar. So slight differences are totally OK. So let's talk a little bit about multiple domains really quick. Um, it's a pretty common problem for webmasters to try to figure out what they want to do when they have, when they want to have multiple domains. Uh, this really commonly arises in the case of different domains for different country codes. Like I want a German version of the site and a French version of the site. So maybe I have a .de and a .fr. Google thinks these are great, and we think multiple domains are totally fine. Uh, but there's a couple things to, to, to keep in mind for this. The same concerns as raised before uh, with multiple con with your content split across multiple URLs uh, apply here. So for example, if you have a DE and a French version of your, a German and a French version of your site, and you have links to the German version, and you have links to the French version, those don't get accumulated. Uh, they, they are applying individually to each domain. So you, you're making a trade-off here. Maybe you want to have that reputation accumulated per language, or you, maybe you want to accumulate it across, uh, onto one site across all of the countries that you're servicing. Um, also, Google's going to pick, tend to pick only one of the uh, domains in your, for, for a single query. We're going to pick the one that's best. So if you have content on, on two different domains, let's say in the same language, say an Australian version and a British version of the same page, both in English, uh, we and on different domains, we might notice that and that the content is more or less the same for the same query, and we're going to only pick one. Um, this can get you sometimes. Most of the time, we're going to get exactly the one that you would want us to get: the code.uk for the British and the um, com.au for Australia. But in some cases, we'll get it wrong. And there's a lot you can do to help us out with Webmaster Console. You can log in and set a, a particular um, each domain for a particular locale. But by splitting this up, you do run the risk of us getting it wrong every once in a while. And there's this last little thing that, I, that, that most people don't think is probably that important, but I really like, uh, which is that you lose the advantage of a tabbed UI. So if you do a Google search, uh, if you do a Google search for something that would bring up your website, and there's two different pages on that site that that will that match that query, what we'll show is the first site regular in the search results, and the second result right below it tabbed over. And we'll also show links to the link that says "Show more results from mysite.com." Uh, so all this stuff really draws the user's attention to that block of uh, information on the page, on the Google search result page. It'll get you, uh, it'll get a lot more attention and, and possibly a lot more clicks. So it's a pretty useful feature. But if you've got that content split all across different domains, we're no longer going to give you that advantage. So that, that's another trade off to consider when you're going to multiple domains. But that said, in a lot of cases, multiple domains are really useful, especially when you're talking about different languages, because users really want to see the stuff in their own locale. Um, and you want to create that experience per country that you're working with. So. OK. So that's generally everything that we've got on duplicate content here. It was a pretty short session in SES. And thank you very much.